I was in India, uh, my first trip going, I had 300 bucks in my pocket. That was my goal money. If the Hindus caught me, I'm gone. I could get a cab, I could, I could rent a driver for a day. I can go sit in the airport and wait for my plane. I don't care, that's my goal money. We had a, a, a little village, and, and, you, and you see this a lot. I was talking to my brother earlier. You see a lot of persecution there on these, on these churches. They killed an entire village of pastors. Killed them, left them dead in the streets. It's, the team, it's called the Tea Maker Massacre. No, the, the soldiers stood there as they were getting killed. And they let them get killed in the streets. They sold tea to support their ministry. And anywhere you go in India, you always hear, chai, 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 chai. So, but I like chai tea, so I drink it. But, I, but it's over there. They, they, were, they, were, they were dying. They were dead. The ones that, were, that escaped, the ones that escaped came to my came to my healing service, or my first service in India. My first service in India. A hundred and something of them, 200 of them, and, and, and there's a caravan of just taxis and walking. And they're like, we, they want to stay. They call me for a meeting. And if you travel with me, you know one thing, I'm always sleeping. I have to sleep, because what's required of me here, I have to always rest. I have to always pray. I have to always get away. You understand that when you're getting pulled left or right, when the anointing is leaving you all the time, touching people you get physically drained. And, and um, it's hot in India. Oh my gosh, I will never go to hell. <laughs> I've been to India in February. I will never go to hell, Jesus. Just send everybody to India in February and everybody gets saved. Trust me. It is close to hell as you can get at heat. So you suffer. Nobody sees us suffering. But that trip in India and the next five trips built what you see today in miracles because we're faithful. And we've seen amazing miracles. Then it took just a little time, and it happened in Kenya, and it happened all over the States. It didn't take as long, but God started building it. Well, they wanted to stay, but we only had enough food for 300 people. That's all we budgeted. Well, now we had 500 people. They go, what do we do? And I'm like, hey, I'm not like an ATM. I, don't, I can't just go get money. I, I put everything on this. I use my real estate money that I just sold a house, paid for the whole trip, paid for the, all the other stuff. This is all I got. I have nothing else. That's what I'm thinking. And I tell them, look, Silver and gold, I have not. But take me to those that ha or make the food and serve the food. I went to the people that serve the food. I walked over to the cooks, and I said, I just want you to keep grabbing out of the box and out of the fridge. I don't want you looking in that fridge. I don't want you looking in that box. I just want you grabbing and cooking, grabbing and cooking. That's all you do for the next five days. I walked over to the servers. And I said, translate this exactly. I had two translators there and one that spoke really good English. I go, make sure the exact words are being spoken. And we did that with the cooks, and we did this with the servers. I go, you don't look in the pot. You just get the spoon, put the rice, put the dough, grab the meat, put a little bit of the meat there. Same thing with the tea, same thing with the snacks. I don't need you looking in there because this miracle is happening. This miracle is happening, but I need you to stay on my level of faith. I need you to stay where I believe. Next five days, everybody ate. Everybody got their three tea breaks. Yes, three tea breaks a day with snacks. They were fat. I started seeing little Indian bellies coming out. They're getting fat. Well, we're taking off. We're, go we're going out there to, uh, to take off to the next part, my next si segue to do ministry. And I looked over there, and, and I pointed to my friend. I said, hey, what's going on? And he's my American. He's Indian, but he's, he's very Americanized. I ruined him when he was young <laughs> in ministry. I told him all the crazy things of America, and he's ruined the poor guy. But that's what you do when you get a foreigner visiting for a while. <laughs> so he's, one of, he's actually my best friend. I said, hey, Timmy, what's up with that? And he goes, that is your miracle. And I go, what do you mean? 
five barrels of food that they're pouring to the cows and the pigs and the chickens, and they're feeding five barrels of rice, chicken curry, dow, all out there to the people. That's a creative miracle. That's a miracle that only God can do. On the next trip, or no, the second trip or third trip when I was in India, I was traveling through a village again this January. I hope in January would be a little cooler. Not so much. So they either got monsoon season or chicken fried season. So either you're going to be swimming and everybody's going to go away or you're going to be fried like a little chicken. So you got to decide what you want to do. Bring your swim trunks and inner tube or just sweat it out. So I chose to sweat it out. So we're in this village. And as we're in this village, um, I'm a, they have a ceiling fan. I have no idea why a place would have a ceiling fan and it doesn't have electricity. <laughs> I'm spending good, precious moments of rest looking on the wall. Well, maybe it's painted and maybe there's a hidden door. And I realize, wait a minute, they don't even have a sound system because there's no electricity here. So I'm over there just twirling the fan, trying to create some, some wind or something. Well, an older lady comes walking in. She walks in like over here at the front of the church. When she walks in, she has her hand like this. You can visibly see, even from a distance, it's crooked. It's bent. It's out of place. The minister traveling with me looks at her. And then instead of praying, because you come with me on the, on the trip, you better pray. You better believe. He goes, hey, Dr. D, you got this? I'm like, yeah, send her this way. He doesn't go on the trips anymore with me. So, <laughs> I have a statue. You need to believe as much as I believe or more. Amen? Because I'm not going to be able to pray for everyone, and you need to be protecting my back. Amen? So I looked at her. She put her hand out like this to get prayed for, and she goes like this. I go, put your hand through this. Put your hand through this. Let me see your hand, baby. So as she put her hand through this, cracking, popping, straightening, all the way to the elbow, it snapped back in place. Thank you. Jesus. She got healed of her hand yesterday. Hallelujah. She got healed yesterday. Yes. Last yesterday, absolutely. Jesus. And it was. And then Bishop, he has an eye. He sees everything. He said, "When I put my hand like this, a fire came in it, Hallelujah. and it was a Holy Ghost fire in my hand as she passed that through." Amen. They don't teach you that. No. It's not something that's in a book. No. It's in my book, but it's not in any other book. It does, you know, this stuff is. There's not a manual. Okay, crooked hand. Okay, we do this. <laughs> It is a creative miracle. It is believing that God will use you and use the faith you put behind something. It is believing that God is, that God will, and that God does. It's believing that God is capable and able, that the scriptures say, nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult for me. Hi, this is David Yannis. I want to thank you so much for listening to our broadcast. Today I want to offer you some very special collections of books that are mine personally that I want to give to you. I'm going to offer you Ignite Your Faith, the book that has been all over the world and has touched people all over the world. It's about healings, miracles, signs and wonders. I'm also going to offer you the CD, Ignite Your Faith, which is not an audio book, but three healing services. These healing services have been anointed, blessed, and recorded them in Sid Ross Studios, and many people have been blessed with testimonies of deliverance and healing. And I'm also going to offer you The Recruit, and Almost Out of Grace, my other two books. These are my first two books. Uh, the Recruit's about me when I was in the military and about divine revelation of miracles and healing while I was in there, intervention by God. And Almost Out of Grace is a book about relationships. And both men and women have been so blessed with it that it's touched their lives. We're going to offer this offer. It's called Ignite, offer number 148 for $50 or more. For $50 or more, we're going to send you all four products. You're going to be blessed with them. You're going to be encouraged with them. And most of all, you're going to help move this ministry forward. God bless you. Remember, you can go to our special website. You can go to give us a call or you can write us. Give us a call, go to our special website, or write us. Include, if you write or call, mention 148 or write down 148 Ignite so we know which packs to send you. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast. Hi, this is David Gannis. I want to invite you to one of our healing services. Please visit our website, find out more details. But we have services all over the United States and literally all over the world 
We have gone through South Africa, Kenya, India, Mexico, Peru. We are all over the United States from Los Angeles to Florida, all the way up to Nashville to Wisconsin, all the way down to Texas. We have several services in Texas. Louisiana, we've been there, and we're going back. Nashville, we've been there, and we're going back. Hawaii, we're going back. I want you to go to our website. Find some place that you can get to so we can pray for you. If you can't make it, just believe. Send me a prayer request. I will try my best to answer you. I do text back. I do email back. I do make phone calls back. I do write back. So if you write me personally, call me. I will try my best to get back to you. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching our broadcast. Remember, go to our website to find out more details about our healing services. God bless you. Yes. It is believing in Kings when it says, this is but a simple thing for our God. It is when you look and Elijah said, open his eyes. Open his eyes because there are more that are with us than with them. Come on. It's believing that the angels are around you and with you working for God's purpose. What is God's will? Everybody asks that. What is God's will? Well, I don't know. In Exodus 15, 26, it says, if you'll follow me, walk with me, keep my statues, and I am your Lord. And you, I will not allow any of the diseases that fell on the Egyptians to fall on you because I am the Lord, thy healer. Amen. Jesus said, I must go about the will of my father. I can only do my father's will. I'm about my father's business. What is the will of God? Well, if you look at Jesus, he spent a lot of time in healing. He spent a lot of time in healing. And I learned this. This is something I learned through just observation, maybe revelation. But anytime someone accuses you, right? This can't be God. This must be the devil. That's what they told him all the time, right? In the Bible with Jesus. If the devil has to accuse you, then you're doing right. Then you're walking in God's will. If the devil's over there making accusations, then you gotta be walking in God's will. If they have to make an excuse and get a group of people to argue and complain about you, praise God. Praise God. He's using you. Praise God. He's using you. So this lady, she got healed, and, and she was so thankful, she just went like this and walked off. I was like, praise God. Hey, it's a different culture. I grab a pastor real quick that was there, always eating. They love when I come to town because there's a lot of food. <laughs> but I don't eat it. I take beef jerky and crackers. It was good enough for the settlers and the cowboys. It's good enough for me. I can't eat that much Indian food. I love Indian food, but not when I don't see a toilet and people are cooking the food. I'm like, oh, no, thank you. Oh, got to be wise. Got to be wise. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Praise God. So I get one of them from eating, and I said, hey, and I dug in my pocket. Here's some rupees, some Indian rupees. You go with this woman to her village, and you testify. I can stay here a whole hundred days and not have her testimony. People know her. You invest. When you see God move, you invest in the gospel. You sow a seed. We went outside. And we went outside. We're about to get, jump into the, the ministry Jeep. And we're taking off. And I, I mean, I'm just, I don't want to make it sound crazy, but I count all my Indians, make sure we got everybody. Because <laughs> I tell them, I'm not going to let y'all get hurt. The anointing's on me. I'm the last one on the, on the Jeep. I'm the first one out, last one out. Y'all jump in. God's with me. Because we're going, to, I got to tell you, I mean, I'm on social media now. I wasn't back then. And I don't think I was invented back then. But anyway. I don't post anything about India until I get back. I can't. I got my most death threats are from Twitter in India. My most death threats. They watch for me when I come through the airports. My, my, and I'm not going into these beautiful places of New Delhi, New Delhi or, or going to Bombay or go, you know, Bombay, going to all these wonderful or, or up in Hyderabad, any of these places because that's not where God sent me. You're going to find that there's billion people in India. If you go to these states, Andhra Pradesh, all these other places, 1% is Christian. So you're talking about millions of people, millions of people that are Christian. So you can fill your events and everything. I'm going to the roughest part. I served a ministry many years for India. Never worked for an Indian man because everything's an emergency. Everything has to be done now. Everything's life and death. But he trained me. God sent me with a world-renowned evangelist in India. Millions of people at his crusades, and I was one that carried his bag. Only in the U.S., never gone to India, but sold. So never went to go to India. I was glad the man left on the plane. <laughs> Every time I left, I'm free. <laughs> I was young. I was young. 
but I tell you what, you learn. You learn to, to not, I don't post my schedule because I go to where he couldn't go because he was too popular, to the most persecuted state in India. They took one of our pastors that pastored to that church, that pastored six churches. They cut his body in six pieces. Sunday morning, his head was here. His torso was there. His arms were there. His legs were there. And they persecuted. And that was way back in the, in the 90s. So I served that ministry. But you know what? I know I reap. I sowed. I sowed. And I reap. And I reap. I started to share it to you on Friday. We don't live on man's economy. Buying and selling. We live on heaven's economy. Sowing and reaping. That's what God does. That's what God does. My ministry moves forward because of the seeds I've sown. Thank you, Lord. Because you have to have a servant's heart. We, we tithe. Our tithe goes to missions. Our tithe in our ministry goes to the hurting. Because that's why I feel led. And I do help send something to my organization that I'm under. I have 200 organizations. One World Ministry Fellowship in the U.S. The other one in South Africa, Christian Assembly. Because I joined that organization in South Africa, I have 6,000 churches I can preach in in South Africa, and I felt God leading me. So we walked out of this place. I'm going to, to go by the jump of the Jeep, and then I, my, my crusade director, he's like, Dr. Dave, he points. We see someone struggling, sweating from a distance, about a field away, just struggling, trying to get to us. He says, we go to her. I'm like, no, her faith is making her whole. Amen. That was the spirit. Sure. We see her coming up close, and I felt horrible. Her leg, her foot was where her kneecap was. She was on the floor like a dog walking fast. Everybody looked at me like I was the worst guy in the world. I just smiled like, oops, okay. <laughs> walked, up to, walked up to her and I said, what do you need from the Lord? And amazingly, she talked English. Not a lot of people in India talk English. And she's like, I believe. And she balanced herself. She stood up that if I can come in front of the man of God, on my own power, that I would be healed. I go, how long ago did you start walking? Three hours. Two villages away. Like a dog in the street. In fact, dogs were following her as she was walking. She goes, I just want to be made whole when she cried. Now, creative miracle is what it is, a creative. And good Lord, I've watched too many cartoons growing up. Because I get very creative. I want to welcome you to Pure Fire School of Ministry, a place where you're going to be inspired in faith and a place where God is going to teach you something that you need to know from the Word of God. I put together several, several ministers, evangelists, uh, pastors, prophets, and we put them together to teach a subject that they are strongly suited for to get it into your spirit and your soul. Um, you can take it online and you can take it at your own pace. You can take one course or you can take all the courses. It's completely up to you. And what my goal is, is to inspire your faith through the teachings of great women and men of God and to make it accessible and affordable. If you go to our school, you'll see that it's affordable for anyone, whatever part of the world you live on, to be able to take it in. And I really believe that Pure Fire School of Ministry will challenge you and get you motivated to do something for God. I want you to get my latest book, Igniter of Faith. I tell you what, it will challenge your faith. It'll make your faith soar when you hear the stories, the testimonies, but most of all, it'll fill you with the Word of God, which is required to get your miracle. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not around people of believers that know that God does miracles even today, then your miracle may not come to you. But if you're around people that are excited about God, that know the Word of God, and you're constantly having it in front of you, I guarantee you, you're so close to that miracle. Igniter of Faith will help ignite your faith to finally get the miracle that you've been looking for. Walked up to her. I, I went and reached down to where her, her leg was, where it stopped, where her foot was. And I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed, and I yanked it as hard as I could. I just yanked it. Well, the, well, my hands hit the dirt, and my hands are pretty big. All the dirt start flying in the air, kind of like just a big mist of dirt, and everybody's coughing. But let me tell you, in Mexico, in South Africa, in Kenya, and here in the U.S., and in Peru, they say it the same way. She stood there with both legs straight, evenly, 
And everybody went, ooh, ooh, ooh. Because God did a miracle. I hugged her. I got another pastor. I gave him some money. I said, to all the villages she walked through, to her house, you testify. This is enough money to take care of you for three days. Go. You leave now. Take her with you. God is good. God is good. God is able to do amazing miracles. And you think, wow, this is amazing. Well, that's overseas. That, you know, I came back when I first got my book out. By the way, those stories are in this book. They're on the, in the back table. It's $10. Um, you can just throw the $10 in the box. You make your checks to DYM, or my name, David Yanez, Ministries, and we have the credit card forms. There's envelopes, but they're 10 bucks. The reason I'm telling you is I'm going to be praying for a lot of people. I'm not going to be back there right away. But if you want to use a credit card to swipe, you're going to have to wait till I'm done. But there's credit card forms over there as well. And I got back from um, my last mission trip in 2012. It's a while ago. No, 2013. And um, my book was just released 2015. And when I got back, I, I contacted several of the major TV stations. My, my publisher is the same publisher as uh, Reinhard Bonnke, uh, Miles Monroe. God does that. I never built that little publishing printing thing, a publisher house, they never would have noticed me and say, we want all your titles and give you a contract for a new book. You don't give up. You trust God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 15, 7, let not your hands be weak, for your labor shall be rewarded. Your labor shall be rewarded. Oh, so many times they feel like they're going to be weak. Amen? But you keep holding. You keep working. So, I contacted all this, my publicist did, and, and she, she worked for the Whitaker House, so she was a publicist for Whitaker House. She kept saying that I, I hired a personal publicist as well. So they're both working back and forth trying to get this book out. Sid Roth was the only one to take the chance. And you know why? Because his, his assistant that met me and did a little interview with me and had me preach on the spot at the, one, of the, one of the conferences, at like the book conference, and she... Uh, she had me preach on the spot. People were getting healed when I was preaching. She's like, took the back cover and said, tell me about this. Tell me about creative miracles. Tell me about recognizing the atmosphere. Tell me about changing the atmosphere. And I'm just on the spot preaching. She said, I, she goes, this guy fits. Well, they all shot it down at first. So she took everything out of Sid's traveling bag and only put my book. He's on a trip to the Ukraine. He said, and he called me on the phone. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's Sid Roth. It's Sid Roth on my thing. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, this is David. All calm. I'm like, <laughs> and and he goes, hey David, this is Sid Roth. How are you doing, brother? <laughs> well, he don't. He never says brother. He says, how are you doing, David? I'm like, okay, I'm good. He goes, I like your book. I like it. Let me tell you what happened. That crazy assistant of mine took everything out of my book, and I had to take and read your book. <laughs> my faith was ignited. Hallelujah. I got off to speak to a thousand Jews in the Ukraine. As I'm preaching, people are getting healed. That's never happened in my ministry. Thank you, Lord. 1,000 people got healed. He goes, that never happened. Let me tell you, as Isaiah asked five, five years ago, that happens in all his services now. Amen. It transferred. The faith transferred over to him as well. He said, I can't wait to get you on my show because if we can get every church in America and every Christian to read this, can you imagine the revival? He was the only one to take, my, take my, my, my book in. All the other major networks, all the major shows, I won't mention anything, sent me replies. Oh, that happens overseas. Oh, it's just miracles. It's not that special. All these major things, they all said these things that were negative. That God only do that over there. People want to hear st different stories nowadays. That time passed. I said, Lord, I will never go on another mission trip until you do the same miracles here in the USA. Until you do the same miracles that I've seen in India and Africa here. And I tell you what, it didn't take more than a year to start seeing bigger things happen. Amazing things happen. People getting healed left and right. Today, I can tell you, I'm back on mission trips. Because I see the same, no difference. No difference. Can I put the picture up of the crooked back? I told you the story on Friday, I told you I'd bring up this picture. Look how bad this back looks. This is, this is a young girl, her name was Daniela. She had this back, um, she wanted to be a ballerina, I told you that before, and she suffered from scoliosis. When I prayed for her, she, 
She said that I didn't even touch her. But the waterfall pushed her over and laid her on the floor. And as that water covered her head over her nose, it became hot oil. And when the oil was too hot, she jumped out of it. The minute she jumped out of it, she heard cracking and popping. Yes, faith has a sound. And her back was sealed. Show her the clean x-ray. Yeah, the next one over. That's what God does. Both x-rays were taken within a week of each other. One on a Tuesday when I prayed, one on the Tuesday after I left. But that is a creative miracle. God's able to make bone and marrow. God's able to replace. The scripture I read yesterday in Matthew 15 said, even the maimed were healed and made whole. God does amazing things. If you're believing for something online and you need something, this is what God does. This is what God does. Show the picture of the, me and the little girl just standing. Danielle, a beautiful little girl. And uh, yeah, just me and her standing there. Look at that. She's so beautiful. I adopted her in faith. She's my little sister. I, I'm always on WhatsApp with her and her mom back and forth. And, and I send her Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, money for school when they need it. They never ask. I just know let the spirit lead me. And, uh, but y'all pray for her. Her name's Daniela because she's a part of this ministry now. She's a part of this ministry now. This happened in Mexico, but let me tell you this. I, I mean, I want to be Angelina Jolie and just adopt the child and bring it with me. But her parents loved her so much. In fact, I was at their house. They, you, know, you always get me to your house if you're making tacos. Praise God. Their mom was making tacos. I'm, I'm chilling out, eating tacos and stuff, and then her dad comes up to me. I don't, you, know, you don't know the situations. You never, no one ever knows a house the situation. But I came up to me, and he just hugged me from behind. And I looked up, and then they go, this is the father of Danielle. And he tried his best English and said, you changed our life. He, he cried, and he cried. And he goes, my baby girl can walk. My baby girl can have a normal life. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I remember the word she told me the night that she got healed. She said, I will never forget that David Yanis came to Tula, Mexico to make me whole. Give us a call, go to our special website, or write us, include, if you write or call, mention 148 or write down 148 Ignite so we know which package to send you. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast.